What's up, everybody? So I'm back again with another video. Uh, I was cruising the internet, uh, looking at gun videos because I'm really excited about a new Smith & Wesson product that's coming out called the um, Ultimate Carry J-Frame. It's in 32 H&R Magnum and 38 Special, and I love J-Frames. Um, I've seen a video from another YouTuber. Uh, the YouTube channel is Nightwood Guns. Go follow them, by the way. Great guy, makes great content. Um, better gun channel than I am, better knife channel even probably, but either way, go follow the guy. He posted about his new Ultimate Carry J-Frame, and I thought, man, I'm on the waiting list. I can't wait to get one, and I planned on um, doing a video on the Centennial here. What's so weird is uh, I, I thought I was sub to the guy, but apparently I wasn't, And um, but dude's super nice. I, I If you guys like gun stuff, go check out his channel. He has way more followers than I do. But, you know, he makes good content, too. And I don't. Of the care, I told him I was carrying my J-Frame. And I needed to do a video of it. So here we are. We're doing a video of it. This is the Smith & Wesson Centennial. This one was made in 2008. But the run, the, re, the classic series run, was from 2007 to 2012. This is a 40-1 Centennial. The original Centennials came out in 1952. And that's why they're called a Centennial, it was to commemorate the 100 years of Smith & Wesson. The Centennial, when it came out in 52, it ran to 74-ish, I believe. And it had um, the hammerless design that went back to the, I believe they called it the New Departure, the Top Break Safety Hammerless. Now, I have a gun that is similar to that, um, but it's not. So, But the back of this is a hammerless design with a grip safety kind of like a 1911 but slightly different we'll get to that so this design went back to the days of the top brake like this guy here except that it had this back end on this particular firearm so kind of like uh you know mesh the two together i'll put a picture in for reference but Back in the day, it was supposed to be a safe, safer firearm, blah, blah, blah. They don't make them anymore. They don't make these anymore. <laughs> so, but these are really unique and interesting firearms, and that's what kind of gravitated me towards it. The originals had a way to deactivate the safety. The new ones don't, because deactivating a safety probably opens the door to lawsuits. But what I like about the new ones is you can carry it and not feel bad about it. Um, this guy's been carried quite a bit. You can see there's holster wear. There's even wear back here. So it's been carried. The grips are absolutely trashed. Uh, the original grips were very pretty, but they had an aggressive um, texture to them, checkering. And I found that the smoother grips are better for shooting. It doesn't cheese grate your palms. I'm going to add something here that I forgot to mention. Um, when changing the grips on a Centennial, uh, they're both J-frames, but you need to get Centennial grips because on a regular J-frame, this ear part here that fits into the frame on a Centennial is significantly smaller, if you can see that. Um, so regular J-frame grips can be made, can be modified to work, but um, they won't work right out of the box. And also, this is a Tyler T grip, except this one's made by BK Grips. But these are made of plastic, and they're cheaper, and you get them a lot faster. So anybody who's looking for these kind of grips for their revolvers, um, check them out. They're really awesome. They're not sponsored, of course. They're a small company, I believe. So This side's more beautiful. That's why I'm showing it over here. But it's been carried a lot and been shot quite a bit I like too. how it's a hammerless design and you can you know so drawing it from a pocket is easy it's snag free i've done like a trigger job i've used the apex trigger kit so this thing now has a very um smooth about eight pound trigger not that you can really tell by the weight by watching the video but i can and it's really nice so uh, the grip safety is kind of like a 1911, except that instead of it being hinged in the center or the near the topish or whatever, kind of like you would think, it's hinged more in the bottom. So without the T-grip, I noticed it's kind of hard to actuate the safety. 
So, but with the T-grip, it kind of makes your grip higher, which is nicer because it makes the barrel more in line with your um, arm and thus recoil is more manageable and it allows you to grip it a lot easier and pull the trigger. With the grip unpulled, the trigger just straight don't move. So love it or hate it. But I think it's neat and interesting because I really like older type of firearms and this kind of is a callback to the days of, you know, 124 years ago type firearms. So this is a J-frame and this would be a K-frame. So you can see it's a lot smaller. The J-frame is a lot smaller than the K. I don't have an L, but I can show you an N-frame. So you get an idea. Uh, firearm sizes. I need to like zoom out, but, and the baby J. See that? J, K, and N frame. N frame is not the biggest it used to be. Now they have the X frame. And the L frame is kind of in between these two. It has a larger frame size, but it has the K frame grip. Eh. And you can tell I kind of like these uh, T grips. They really, this is a combat uh, Magnum, uh, model 19. It's a newer one. This one has the, the Hillary hole, but, uh, I, I abuse these guns in a sense. Like I shoot them a lot and I, that's why I'm okay with buying a new one to do that with, because I really would feel guilty if I bought like a vintage, you know, really high quality Smith and Weston and start hot, hot rotting ammo through it. And, um, these, these newer ones, especially the 19, will take the abuse they're completely well they're not completely different but they've been they've been redesigned with uh special care so that you can run super hot 357s all the time and not crack the forcing cone like you can the older ones and while we're on it this was the in frame uh model 25 that i had finish issues with and they reblued it for free. It didn't take very long. And I was actually surprised with their customer service. They did me right. And the bluing is better than I actually expected. So much so that I think it's gorgeous. And I'm going to, back to the J-frame, uh, since this one has been worn, whenever I do get the Ultimate Carry J-frame in 32, I'm going to pretty much retire this one from Carry and I'm going to go ahead and send it to Smith & Wesson to have it re-blued. And um, since it's been carried a lot shot, I'm sure they'll do some things. And this is kind of like a video I'm going to make. Uh, I'll probably make another one before I send it. But, you know, I think it's a good candidate. This is a beautiful gun. It's kind of a collector's piece. I do carry it, though. Um, but once I get the 32 h and Magnum J-frame, um, this, this one's going to be kind of like a safe queen in a sense of course i'll shoot it but um i'll try to keep it to finish nice i do carry it some guys might actually want to know i carry it in this really cool desantis holster um it's called the fletch and it actually comes with a two plus two ammo pouch which i have disconnected but you get the idea um it's a really good holster i'm not the biggest fan of the pouch i but you can see here it holds six rounds of 38 um eh, whatever for the price that this this is i was like yeah hey, what the heck it was like six dollars more for the pouch so i just got it and if i ever needed i got it but this is a really good holster has a retention thing here and i've been carrying it in this for a little while absolutely love this thing so that's the smith and wesson 40-1 the originals from the 50s 1952 would be a 40 with no dash centennial model so Hope you guys liked this video. Oh, the new ones are also uh, rated for plus P ammo, which is nice. And uh, the old ones I don't think are, so whatever. But this has been a fun gun um, for the range. It's made of steel. It's not an air weight. So shooting 38 specials are decently pleasant to shoot in this. It doesn't hurt my hand terribly. Um, like the air weights do. The air weights are just hell. And which is why I want the, when the ultimate carry comes out, that's why I'm actually ex wanting to get the 32 h r Magnum, which is, um, I got some ammo for it already. That's how much, that's how serious I am about buying this gun. 
but you get the idea here. These two, that's a 38 special, and that's a 32 H&R Magnum. So it's a little bit smaller, but um, apparently they have mm, relatively the same uh, punch, if you will, like foot pound of energy upon impact. So you get six rounds and you get less recoil in the same package. So, except that the ultimate carry will be an aluminum frame, which is an air weight, which is fine. It won't recoil, but the steel frames, J frames are awesome. I love it. These are just collectible. Um, so yeah, I hope you found the video entertaining, interesting. I hope you kind of maybe learn something about some of these older models, like, you know, you got to see this. I'd make another video of this just by itself. And anyway, if you guys like this video, uh, subscribe. Check out the Slip Joint Guide book. Uh, affiliate link below um, where you can fill out your knife collection in the book. Also, check out the Nightwood Guns channel. He's a pretty cool dude. So, and go give him a follow while you're. Go give him a follow while you can. So the cat's meowing. I better go. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.